Hi. I got saved in 1981, which is nearly 40 years ago now. I'd always gone to church, did the usual things. I went to Sunday school. I um, became a Sunday school teacher. I joined the youth fellowship and went through that. Um, I then became a member of the church. I must have been in my young, young teens at the time, but it was never real. Um, I look back and I think I was just going through the motions. I've always been looking for something. I spent a lot of time when I was younger looking for something um, and never really finding it. I remember going forward at the Leighton Ford Crusade when I was singing in the choir. They sent me all the books, I filled in all the books and, and finished it, but there was nothing real about it at all. I just let it go after that and met my husband, we got married, had two kids, we were living up in Aberdeen at the time, and then we moved back down here. And when we came back here, after a couple of years, a Sunday school, a church, should I say, a, a Church of Scotland mission came to the village and I went along to hear one of the films, spoke to one of the guys, he came to the house and I gave my heart to Jesus. My husband Tom did the same the day after. The guy who led us to the Lord, Drew Greenwood, was involved with the Full Gospel Business and Fellowship and he said, what about coming along and the other people about 20 of us who got saved, we used to go along to hear them once a month. For the first time, I actually realised that these businessmen, because that's what they were, they were workers, and they had a personal, real relationship with this risen Jesus. They believed that their work and their home life and their life in general was impacted by Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And when I look back, I'm grateful for that because I realised that Jesus was really real and was interested in my life. I wouldn't say it's been easy. I'm not an easy person to live with, asked Tom. Um, I have my moments like everybody else. I have my fears and anxieties. And God has spent a lot of time working in my life. When I've asked him for things, he says no sometimes. He says, wait. He says, you're not ready. But the point is, every time I have a problem, every time something comes up that's a crisis, and I go to him, an answer is given. It's difficult to hear God speaking, Jesus speaking. Um, it's something that you've got to become aware of. But if I can give you a couple of instances... There was one particular time when I wasn't close to him and we'd taken, a friend and I had taken three other people along to a women's conference across in the Glasgow area. And um, after one of the meetings, I was quite touched and I'd gone out into the garden to sit. And all I can say is this voice in my head said, have I ever let you down? When I came home and spoke to Tom about it, tears welled up in his eyes and he said, Annabelle, God has never let us down. My daughter has been through um, a first marriage that was very difficult. And the day after she came up to stay with us, to live with us, I mean, she was just broken hearted. Um, I was at another women's conference and they were all singing and everybody was happy and I was standing crying, really. And I thought, I don't know how I'm going to cope with what's going on at home. And again, this voice in my head, out of the blue, said, Don't worry, Annabella. I'm right in the centre of this. Now, there were times in the years that she stayed with us when things got really bad. And many a time, I've had to go into another room and said, Lord, you said that you were right in the centre of this, and I'm trusting you that that's what you're doing. You're right in the middle. And he was. What can I say? But when I look back, I see the hand of the Lord Jesus all the way through that particular problem. I'm not saying that he has an easy, you have an easy time being a Christian. 
We go through the same trials and tribulations as everybody else. But when things get difficult, there is someone who knows better, who knows us better than we know ourselves, who knows what is good for us, who knows what we need, who knows what it takes to change if we let him. And sometimes that is very difficult. I'd like to finish by reading something that means a lot to me. I want our conversations to give you comfort. I'd like our dialogue to have some give and take. I'd like you to think about me during your day. I want you to know that you're never alone, to feel that wherever you go and whatever you do, there's a companion by your side. I want you to discover my presence in your daily life. I'm not a particularly powerful Christian. I'm not particularly good at praying, reading my Bible. Um, but I know this. Without him, I'd be lost. Without Jesus, there is no fullness of life. He's the very best that anybody can have.